Hi everybody, welcome back to the Desen Works channel and we're on to video three on the ST2 restoration project. So let me give you an update on where we're at. So if you remember in the last video, we took all of the body work off, um, which is scattered around my garage at the moment, fast running out of space. I have over the course of the last few days, I've stripped down the front fairing um support i took apart all of the pannier units which are now sort of sat down here um i should i think be able to get these away to powder coat so i was able to fully strip them down but the ones for the main top box i can't get this bracket off at the end so if anybody knows if that does come off um, but i don't really want to hit it because I don't want to damage it because these are quite hard to find so this one might have to be rubbed down and painted by hand but I'm hoping to get these across to a powder coater and coated properly likewise the front front fairing frame the side panels are in pretty good nick but you can see on the main front fairing supports there's a lot of um, aluminium corrosion so I'm going to have to get that done. All of the fairings came apart okay. I lifted the tank off since the last um, video. It's pretty straightforward to get off because it's literally held on by this rubber clip and then the bolt that goes through there. The lines for the fuel tank are not too bad, but as I said, I'm going to replace these with new so that I know I've got good quality there. And I'm also going to put an instantaneous in the lines just because it's quite difficult to get these off when they've sat on air for a while. I think this is probably the first time these have come off. So it did take a fair amount of effort to get those off. All the nuts and bolts have been soaking in uh, WD-40 and penetrant oil for a little while where they're corroded. So the aim for today is I want to try and get down to just having the engine and the rolling parts of the chassis and then everything else off the bike. So the controls will be off. I hope to get the subframe plastics off, the electrics, the air box, uh, the radiator, and the main stand, the exhaust system. Having had a look at the frame in a little, little closer detail, can't see any signs of cracking, but there's a little bit more corrosion than I was expecting. I am now starting to lean towards possibly getting this powder coated as well, just so that I can get it into a really nice condition. As you can see, the bike is absolutely filthy. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start from the rear and move forward. Um, so first off, I'm just gonna remove these last couple of bits of electrics here so I can drop the plastics out, which are loose from where I took rear part of the fairing off. So let's just undo these and get, get the electrics away. Okay, I'm getting close to where I think I need to pull the loom off. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to work all the electrical connect connections back. I'm just going to take every clip or um, rubber bungee off so that we're in a position to be able to pull the loom out. Right, we've got this um, Ducati alarm system in here as well, which is obviously been connected into various points. I'm just going to snip it out um, and, and remove it from the bike. I'm going to leave the looms that it's connected into quite obvious so I can see what pieces I need to bridge. Um, but I'm not intending to keep that alarm on there. And it's whoever installed it, installed it in a right cack handed way and not very well either. So let's just cut those bits and pieces out of that loom as well. Mm -hmm. 
one really bad wiring loom removed. Right, let's remove the battery box. Right, it's direct connection to the injectors on here. So unlike the 748s where there's a manifold for the actual electrical connections, it's gone direct to the injectors. So what I'm just gonna quickly do is take off the air box so I can get clean access into taking those off without damaging those connectors at all. So I'm gonna pop off the top lid. I'll have to loosen off the manifold so the circlet that goes around the mouth and doing these two bolts in the bottom of the air box and pulling it away. Let's quickly do that then. Now it was a bit awkward getting the air box out. I thought that was a peg, but it turned out to be a bolt, so I had to do that. And interestingly, I've just seen that my uh, top yoke has got damage in the steering lock. It looks like it's forced round at some point, so I'm gonna have to get a new top yoke as well. There's another list of parts. We can see the direct connections I was talking about for the injectors, so I just need to pop those off so that I can get the loom out of the bike. And we can also see the throttle position sensor connection as well, which I also needed to get to. So I'm just gonna carry on disconnecting the loom. Okay, the loom's into its last, last little froze. So I'm just gonna undo the ECU, disconnect the ECU plug, and then we should be able to remove the loom in its entirety from the bike. Okay, loom is off. What I'm gonna do now is disconnect the two brackets that hold the ignition coils on, and we'll get them off. And then I'm also gonna remove the breather box oh and um, I just found out I've got a damaged breather hose so I'm going to need a new one of those as well ah we love stripping bikes apart right let's get these couple of bits and pieces off Oil breather is out, ignition coils are off. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove footrest hangers. So rider and pillion. So let's get that done. Okay. Uh, Let's remove the throttle bodies. So it's only a case of undoing the two Jubilee clips that hold them onto the manifolds and then undo the throttle cable and should be able to just pop it off. Oh, sorry. And the forget this has like a choke cable as well and the choke cable as well. So choke, throttle cable, both the manifolds, pop them off. Okay, throttles are off. Okay, so I want to remove the radiator. I've not drained the water out as yet, so what I'm gonna do, take off the drain plug off the side of the engine, empty out the coolant. It's kind of nice because we're on the side stand, so it's lent this way. So hopefully get the vast majority of it out of the way. And then we'll take the radiator off and all of the coolant hoses, uh, and I'll empty out the expansion bottle as well. Okay, let's do this. Okay, I'll leave this drain in and just take these hoses off here just to assist it now. So let's do that. Okay. 
Okay, radiator and all the water hoses are now off. What I'm looking at now is I need to get the exhaust off, but looking at where the brake for the rear cylinder is, I'm gonna have to take the center stand off, which is two, I think this is a stud that goes all the way through. And then we've got a big hex bolt here. I'll just check the other side. Uh, looking at this, I'm gonna have to take the master cylinder off. So I'm gonna have to undo that bolt, that bolt, before I can get to the bolt that goes through all the way to the other side on the center stand. Okay, let's do this. Center stand is off and that's because I wanted to get to this bolt here is not looking great. Let's uh, see what we can do. Very rusty hex key. Okay, let's hope this comes undone. Okay, that head's rusted to hell, so I can't I can't save it. And the moment you put any force on it, just tears apart. So I'm gonna have to hacksaw this end off. Doesn't matter if um, when I take this apart, I can't salvage that because I can just drill all the way through it to clean it up and then just put a nut and bolt through it, um, which will probably be beneficial in the future anyway. So what I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna film it, but I'm gonna just uh, hacksaw this off and then I will split this and get the, hopefully get the exhaust off. Although I do have the fun to come of um, taking the nuts off that also look a bit uh, worse for wear. So fingers crossed we get this off. Let me come back to you in a second. Okay, exhaust is off. Um, interestingly, I started, uh, where is it? I started hacksawing through the top of the bolt then I thought what I would do is I would loosen off the front part of the exhaust just so I could see if I could get slightly better clearance. And when I did, it just dropped off. So it wasn't even tight, um, which is a bit of a godsend. Um, I'm going to need new studs for the heads for the exhausts because the nuts were just completely rusted on. That one I had to bang a, so that's a 13 mil nut, but I had to bang a 12 mil socket onto it to be able to get it to go. It was so badly corroded. The vertical pipe wasn't too bad. I mean, the collets have come out for the flange, but on the horizontal, they're all corroded in. So we'll probably need some new ones of those. And you can see just how messy the engine is now. Um, and what and primarily the reason why I'm taking it apart so it's quite heavily corroded um, it's particularly in the center there and what I've noticed now that I've got the frame more exposed is there's a lot more corrosion starting nothing nothing serious at all by the way so it's not it's not panic station type corrosion but I think it's going to make me revisit and I, as discussed earlier in the video, I am just going to powder coat this just so I know that the frame is in a good position. So that's what I wanted to set out to achieve today. Um, <laughs> my garage is a clutter mess, which I need to um, <laughs> sort out and get everything down to my lockup so that I can get some space. So next video, I'm intending to strip the remainder of the bike. So we'll get it up onto the engine stand um, and then hopefully drop the wheels out, drop the forks and everything out, all the shock, and then should leave us just with the um, engine and frame, just the last piece to take off and then we'll take it off. What I've decided with the amount of bits and pieces that I've found coming up now is I'm just going to outsource this repair for the fairing. I think with the amount of paintwork that I'm going to need doing, such a small repair won't add very much to the overall cost of, of getting them repainted because it's the only broken panel. So I'm not going to I'm not going to waste time on such a small piece just trying to fix it myself when there's so much more to do on the bike. So I'm going to sort out getting the fairings repainted and then I can focus on the bike because 
as we've seen as i've been going through in these last two videos there's all sorts of little problems that are just cropping up and i want to make sure that i'm dedicating my efforts to getting the bike right um and leave somebody who's got far more skill and knowledge than i have in fair and repair to do that although i'm comfortable to do it i'd rather just get this engine sorted get all the plating done um, source all the new bits and pieces and start getting the bike back together as quickly as possible okay guys so we're going to call this video quits for today so third video loads of progress made i've got piles of bits everywhere that i need to get on with sorting out the replacement items for i've got to get my plating kit get the plating done then I've got to work out how I can get the frame and all the other bits and pieces I want powder coated away to get powder coated. Then the fairings, how I get them away to be painted. So plenty, plenty to be getting on with, but the next video, as I said, will be the engine. So we will do the last part of the strip down of the bike. So if you enjoyed that video, please chuck us a like as it helps the YouTube algorithms. Uh, any questions or comments, stick them down below and I will try and answer them as quickly as I can. And if you're not a subscriber to the channel, would really welcome you as a subscriber. And if you're already a subscriber, thank you very much for your support. It's really making it worthwhile filming all these videos. See you in the next one. Cheers then. Bye.